Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a highly requested one for you today. We're going to learn how to play uh, the Godfather theme uh, as played by Slash in a live... I'm using the concert footage from T Tokyo in 1992. You can find that on YouTube, and that's what I'm basing this off of, and that seems to be the one that everybody wants to, to, to do, so we're going to do it. Uh, before I do that, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video, hopefully. And uh, check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. Uh, I've got a great, thousands of people signed up. It's a great guitar community. Uh, we do a lots of like live chat events, and uh, all my guitar courses are there, so it's a, it's a really fun place to be. So hopefully you'll check it out. That link will be in the description as well. All right, so we are tuned down a half step here, as per slash, usually. Uh, so just tune to E-flat tuning. Those notes will be in the description if you need help with that. Um, and let's get going with this. Now, there's going to be some really nice melodic parts of this, as you can tell from the performance that I did at the beginning. Um, so those are easily recreatable. And the other parts are heavily improvised. So when you'll see him play this, He'll do around the same kind of thing, but it will never be note for note. Um, he, he'll kind of do some of the same stylics, but um, this type of playing <coughs> is really, when he's not doing like the really nice melodies from the Godfather theme, he's doing, he's really kind of improvising around it. Uh, but I'm gonna do my best to break those licks down still, kind of how they're recorded, but don't worry about getting them absolutely note for note. Just get the vibe down of it. Um, um, he would probably never even know the difference himself. All right, so let's start with, uh, on the video, if you find the video, the video I was looking at, I don't know, but this is about two minutes and 50 seconds into it. So it's right before he starts going into the theme. He starts kind of establishing the key of, of that. So that's where I pick up from here. Um, and then we have this. That is the first lick. Let me turn this uh, delay off because it's a little bit irritating. So we're going to start with um, 810 on the low E, and then over to the 8 on the A string, kind of a slow bend, then pull off 10 to 8 on the low E, and back to that uh, 10. So we'll All right, now we have a, a little bit longer run here. Um, now I'm going to stop there because it really kind of starts a lick there that we're going to um, check out. So we're going to start here to 8, 10 on the low E, then 8, 10 on the A, and slide it into the 12. This is heavily palm muted too. And by the way, neck pickup here. For, for most of this, you're going to use the neck pickup till the very end. So we have... Then you play 10 on the D, G, B, and uh, high E. So we have this. So just kind of roll your finger across all those strings. Then play 13, 12, 10. So just... When you go down 13, 12, do a quick little hammer on, pull back off to 10 on the high E string. And then we go over into a bend on the 13th fret on the B. That bend's gonna start basically the next lick. So we have this. All right. Now he goes into this lick, which you know, it might sound kind of erratic, but he, you can tell he's doing, trying to attempt to do the same thing. He's just trying to do it really, really fast. So not all the notes are going to come out exactly the same. Um, but what the lick is, it's a, it's a pattern, and the way he's fingering is he does a bend at the 13th fret on the uh, whole set bend. And then he's going to do um, hammer on 10 to 13 on the high E, and he uses his pinky for that 13 on the high E. Pull back off. To the 10 on the high E, so this. So and then you do a bend with your middle finger at the 12th fret on the G. Now he's he's not getting a full bend in there. He kind of goes. Kind of sounds like he's doing the trying to bend, but it's obviously so fast you can't really do a full bend there. So um, we have basically the lick is that it's this. 
into a bend at 13, and then again with a bend at 12. But that fingering kind of helps a little bit by you know, using the pinky on the high E string kind of frees up that the ability to grab that note on the, on the B string. So that's why he's doing it. Alright, so he does that for uh, about an hour and a half. And then he has this little lick that leads into the next back section. So basically when you're... So we have this... He does a quick little thing like this. When you hit that top note, he plays just somewhere out of the lick. Don't worry about how many times you play it. Just over to 10 on the high E string and then pull off 13 to 10 on the B. Over to 13 on the high E string. So that's what gets you out of that lick. So basically do the lick that we just did. Repeat it a bunch of times and then when you feel ready, just do that. So that's 10 on the high E. Pull off 13 to 10 on the B. Over to 13 on the high E. And then we have another kind of fast descending run. Looks like this. All right. So this starts with a roll from 13 on the B to 13 on the high E. Then back to that 13 on the B. So after you do that, you go up to the high E string and do a hammer 12 to 13, pull back off to 10, and pull off to, uh, I'm sorry, pull off to 12, and then pull off to 10. So it does. So that's the beginning of it. Then you go back to 13 on the B string, and uh, back to the 12 on the high E string. And then basically we go from 13 on the B to 12 on the high E, back to 13 on the B. So, so far, just I know it's a little bit confusing. And when you're dealing with these kind of improvised, just off the cuff licks, um, they're really hard to kind of recreate for him as well. So you just got to keep thinking it's the style of the lick that is that is the issue here because it's like a lot of the same things but with slight variations all over the place. So I mean, you're not going to get a note for note, but we have. Yeah, that's so far. And then you're going to go over to the 10th fret on the high E, hammer 10 to 12, and pull back off to 10. Then we have that 13 on the B again, back to that 10 on the high E, and to a bend there at the 13th on the B. So let me just play through that slowly so it might be easier to follow just that way. the rest of it. So we're over on the B string. Now. So you do that bend at the 13th fret, then play 13 to 11, hammer back on to 13, pull off to 11, slide down to 10. And then now since you're at 10, you're going to pick that, hammer back on to 11, and pull back off to 10. So we have this. Over to 13 on the G string, back to 10 on the B, and then you're going to pull off 13 to 12 on the G string, and then 13, 12, 10. So we have this from here. here at the end of this long section we have we just have a 12 on the D 
It starts slowing down here at the very end of the lick. 12 on the D, rolled over to the G string. Back to that 12 on the D, to the 10 on the G. And the heavily palm meter. And then you're going to end it by sliding into the 15th fret on the B string. Alright, so when you get there, now we start a nice, kind of easier melodic section where he's actually, you know, quoting stuff from the theme. So this. So that's the first phrase. So that's just from that, tenth, that 15th fret that we just slid into. Then you go 14, 15, 16. Then back to 15 a couple times. Over to 15 on the uh, G string. Now, if you're watching the video of him do this, it's really good. Let Slash has an unbelievably great vibrato technique. It just sounds really smooth when he's doing it. If you watch, especially this part, I just wanted to mention it because I, I was like, oh, this is a kind of. You can really see how he gets his. How he gets anybody that's got a nice vibrato gets it. It's because he's not using his fingers to do it. He's using his whole hand to do it. His whole, or basically his forearm. So when he goes. You see how his, whole, his fingers stay stable and he just uses the strength of his forearm and his hand, the weight of it to pull it and back and forth. And that's how you get a lot of control and a lot of power from him. So I just wanted to bring that up because it's a very good way of if you can watch him do that vibrato there, even when he's just doing it like a downward motion with his um, index finger, um, it's a great thing to emulate for your vibrato technique. All right, so don't take it from me, take it from Slash. So we have this. Slide it down. And then the next phrase is the same thing, except you resolve at the 14th front of the G instead of 15. Easy enough. And then we have this. All right, so that's 15 on the B string, then go 14, 15. Jump up to 18. Back down to 15, 14. Try this. Then he does a pre-bend, a pre whole step pre-bend at the 15th fret on the B string. And just release. Really nice part there. And then he does a half step bend and release from the 14th fret. Then over to the 14th fret on the G string, kind of half step bend and release a couple times. Kind of, and then back to the and then release here on the B again, the 14th fret. And then resolve it to 14 on the G. So it is. All right, and then we get uh, kind of the main part of the theme. All right, so that's the first phrase of it. So we have this, 10 on the B, 10 on the high E string, up to 13. Once again, you're rolling that finger. And then you're gonna pull off 10 to 12, I mean 12 to 10, I'm sorry. And then 13 to 10, then back to pull off from 12 to 10. Over to 11 on the B, then 13. Try this. Pull off. Pull off. Pull off. Next phrase starts the same. All right. So um, that started the same. But after that second 12-10 pull-off, slide down and go 
slide into the 10th fret there on the B string, then 9, 8. Put some vibrato on there. Next phrase. All right, so that's uh, 8 on the B string, 6 on the high E, and uh, 10th fret, spin it up a whole step, so it is. And then it releases that, and then goes 8 on the B again, 6 on the high E again, but now grab the 9th fret on the high E string, and just bend it all a half step with some vibrato. So it is. All right, then we have this. All right, so that's at the 10th fret on the B string. Hit it a couple times. And then pull off uh, 11 to 10 there. And then you're going to do a pre-bend there, a whole step pre-bend at the 10th, uh, 11th fret, I'm sorry. Release. Then down to 10 again. Half step, then release. Try this. Slide down to 6. Then 6 over on the G. Next section, looks like this. All right, and from there we go into some more crazy fast licks. So um, let's start here at the 10th fret on the high E string, 10, 9, 8. Slide into it. Up to 12, back to 8, and then 11, 10 on the B string. And after you hold that for a second, he does some half step bending releases there on the 10th fret. So here it is. All right, and now this next one, he does a bend at the 8th fret on the B string, then releases it. So where it's a half set, and then all the way down. So it's a little bit tricky. So that's all, all just talking about whole set bend, and then release it down to where it's a half set bend, and then just down to the without the bend. And then we have. Now that is a 10th fret, a half set pre bend. Release, pull off to 8. Back to 10, some half set uh, uh, bend and release there. All right, and then we have the next lick, which is um, goes into a pretty fast section, so the big dramatic part of the solo, looks like this. Stop there because we have a very definitive lick that's coming up right after this. But this part right here is one of those things that, uh, like kind of the opening lick, you can um, kind of get the vibe of it. It's very similar to the open lick as well. So, um, and you can just really kind of do what you want with it, like he does. So, uh, we're going to start here after at the 10th fret there on the B. You're going to grab that and play 10, 11, 13. And then 10 on the uh, high E, and then... And he does this lick a couple times. He plays 13, 12, and then... I'm sorry, yeah, 13, 12. And then hammer, I mean, a pull off 13, 12, 10. Try this. And do it again. Try this. Over to 13 on the B string. Back to the 12 on the high E string. Back to that 13. So you'll see some similarities from when we did this earlier. And then you're going to hammer on 10 to 12 on the high E. Pull back off to 10. 
um, 13 on the high E, I mean, I'm sorry, B string, and then 10 on the high E. So just kind of play it like we did before. And then try to do the lick similar to what we did. See that? That's what we did in the first lick. So just kind of continue with the same thing. But when you get to that 10th fret where we slid before up to the 15th, when you get to, when you get to that 10th fret, continue the leg down. You're going to do a hammer, 10 to 12, pull back off to 10, slide down to 9. And then kind of pull off 10 to 9, over to 12 with a D. And then we're going to work our way back up. Uh, 9, 10, 12 on the uh, G string. So basically the lick we did before when we get down here. And then from here extend it. Coming back up. And then here we're going to go. We're going to go 10 on the. Um, B string, hammer 11, pull back off to 10, over to 12 on the G. And then go all the way up. 10, 11, 13. 10, 12, 13. And to the bends there, the 15th fret. We, uh, he does, he does uh, some whole step bends and then some, uh, a bigger bend in there as well. So I kind of want to stress, those licks are very hard to get note for note, and I don't want you to worry about it. I want you to kind of, you can maybe pause the video right now and just kind of work on something that you think feels... The idea is to get to that bend at the right moment, and everything else is just, you know, kind of just... Uh, going for it. So whatever you want to do. So when we get to those bends, we have a really cool uh, section here. So I'll stop there. We're going to cover this lick right here. So when you do this, you do those 15 fret bends there. Pull, uh, pick 15, 13, back to 15. And now what you can do here for this lick, it's just all based from 17 to 15 and 13. And what you want to do, you just pick 17, pull off to 15, then pick 17 again, and pull off 15, 13. doing it if you slow it down about seven times um, once again it doesn't really matter you can end of those bends at the 18th fret and then we have this next section all right so I'm gonna stop there so now this up here is pretty cool he starts out slow then it gets faster as he starts going into the lick out of those bends. And so after the 18th fret bends, you're going to play 18, 17, 15. All right? So you have that, and he plays it kind of slow, and then he starts speeding it up, and he treats it as a 16 note, uh, six note lick by playing um, 18, 17, 15 on the high E and the B. And then repeat that. So the first three... 18, 17, 15 on the high E, and then repeat, but this time also adding the notes on the beat. And when he does that second one, he slides that down to the, the 14th fret. Then we have the. So we have 17, 17, 15, 17, 15, 13. So we have this. And then uh, 15, 13, 15, 13, 15, 13, 12, over to 15 on the B. So, so all together. And then 
gonna play 13, 12 on the high E then, over to 15 on the B, back to the 12 on the high E string, and then into the bends of the 15th fret on that B string. So. All right, so now uh, from those bends, it looks like this. Stop there when it starts uh, doing the kind of the unaccompanied part of the solo. So, um, so out of that, out, out of those bends, the second one's bent, uh, the last one's bent more, and then we have this 13 on the B to 14 on the G. Do that a couple times, and then play 15, 13 on the B string, and a little slight little bend there on the 13. So this. And then play 14, 12, 14 on the G string. And then slide it into the 13 to 15. And then he has a bend, a pre bend at the 13th fret on the B string. Release. Pull off to 11. And then. And then hang, um, grab that 14 where there's a little pause on it. So we have uh, from the. Sorry, when you do this, that 14, 12, 14, go 12, 14, then slide 13 to 15. There's a little extra couple notes in there. A bit. And then we had this. All right, from here, we have uh, another kind of longer phrase. So that is going to be starting 11, 14 on the B string, and then do a kind of a hammer pull, slide down to 10, and then play 10, 11, and then do that hammer pull between 10 and 11, over to uh, 12 on the G string, back to 10 on the B. So, okay. So when you do this, go down to the 12th fret on the G, do a bend release. Over to, pull off to 10, over to 12 on the D, and then go back up to the 10th fret on the, on the uh, G string. And then you're gonna do a, just a very quick uh, burst of what, the, what we did in the very beginning, the first fast look in the song. So we have this, you do that bend at the 12th fret on the G, then you have that little, remember a hammer pull? 10, 13 hammer pull on the high E. And then that bend on the 13th fret, because we just did the bend on the G, so now the next one's gonna be the 13th fret on the B. And then do that hammer pull again. And then, obviously the second time, the next time, you're gonna be doing the bend on the G. And then this time, he actually does two in a row on the bends on the G. And then we're going to kind of uh, move on from there out of the lick. And we're going to end it sort of like we did before when we went all the way down to that D note. Kind of the same way. Except go, instead of going back up from this note, we're going to play 11. So obviously I'm not worried about getting everything just note for note. It's really kind of just getting the vibe and landing on the right notes. All right, so you can even treat that like I just did right there. So coming out, when I got down to that, I just kind of did it like I did the opening loop. variation there it's it's uh not you don't need to make it overly complicated okay 
All right, this next section is pretty cool. So it's kind of a confusing order of notes, but there is a little bit of actual, um, you can find little patterns in this one, so it's not completely just random. Um, but we're going to start here playing 8, 11 on the D string, and then do that hammer pull, slide down to 7. And then kind of do the same thing here, 7, 8, and the hammer pull between those two notes. Play 10, 8, 7. So, really, when you get to that 7, that's kind of the beginning of this section. You can kind of treat it like that. So, this is just kind of like a little transition part. So, when you get here, it's easier to memorize what's going on if you just kind of think of that as a starting point. All right, now the first time through with this, from this starting point, we have this. All right, so uh, that is just really heavily palm muted once again. We have 10, 8, uh, 7, 8, 10, up to 7 on the D string. Then you're going to play 8 on the D. Play this. Then go back to 10 on the A string, back to 7 on the D, then 8, 10 on the A. So that's kind of like... And then we go back to the 7 on the D string, it's complicated, and then back down 7, 8, I mean 10, 8, 7. So I think of that as just one, the, the first pattern. So it's about memorizing that group right there. All right. Now from here, we can kind of treat this 7 as the beginning of the second group, which looks like this. So that is 7, 8, 10 um, on the A string, up to 7 on the D, back to 10 on the A, then 8 on the D, back to that 10 on the A. All right, and then uh, 7, 8, uh, hammer, pull on the D. And you're going to play 10, 8, 10, 7 on the A. So that's the end of the second pattern. So we have this. Then the third pattern starts the same. Except we have a little bit different ending. It has 10 on the A, back to 7 on the uh, D, and then and you do a quick hammer, 10 to 8 to 10, and then... 7, 8, 10 on the A. So we have this. All right, and now it gets a little bit, we start getting towards something that's a little bit easier. Before that, we have one more transition. We have 7 on the D, to 10 on the A, 8 on the D, 10 on the A, and then 10, 7 on the D. Now, so we have this. All right, so that's a little transition there. I guarantee you Slash is not thinking about all this, by the way. It is, he's thinking of it just a completely random bunch of licks he's, he's piecing together. So if you have a hard time remembering all this stuff, don't feel like, uh, I just can't get it. Just... <laughs> Do kind of 
kind of patterns around that like that, and, and you'll be fine. But there is one distinct pattern that he repeats the same way four times in a row. So he actually meant, meant this one, and that's coming at the very end of it towards the plays like four times, and that's playing the eighth fret, I mean a seventh fret on the D, to ten on the A, then eight on the D, and ten on the A. So we have that. And then you can do a quick trill, I'm not trill, but just hammer eight to ten, pull back off to eight on the D. So we have this. Alright, so just repeat that four times. Alright, and then we kind of, he starts it like the fifth time, like he's going to do it again. And, but from there, just do the trill at the 7 and 8. Over to 10 on the uh, A string, and then go back 7, 8, 10 on the D, over to the 7 on the D string. And here's at the very end of it here, and it's pretty easy to remember everything after this. Uh, 7 on the G. Well, 10, 9 on the G, and pull off 10, 9, 7. And then we play 9, 7, pull off 9, 7, pull off 6, and do that again. Kind of an extended trill between 6 and 7 on the G. So coming out of this. From there, uh, we have this. All right, so that's kind of kind of slowing down here, palm muted. Uh, six fret there on the G, slight bend on it, and then play eight seven six five three on the D string. And then you're going to pick the 5th fret uh, twice on the D string. A little bending release. Pull off to 3. And then you're going to do a roll. 5 on the A, 5 on the D, back to 5 on the A. Then 3 on the D, over 3 on the A. From there, Five on the A, three on the D, back to five, three on the A. So we have this so far. From there, we're gonna go three on the D, five, three on the A, over to that five on the E. Now from here, it's pretty easy. We just have this. So that's just going back and forth from 3 on the A to 5 on the E. So I just set up a little bit, and then take it down to 4 on the low E, and then 3 on the low E, then 1, just one time, slide into that fifth fret on the A. So from that slide on the A, we have this. So that's sliding into 5, into 4, slide into 8, and play 7, slide into 10, and then 8, and then slide into 12, play 13, and back to 12. Alright, and then we have this little melody. So we're at the 10th fret here, a couple times there on the B string, half set bend in, release, kind of a pre-bend there at the 11th fret like we did already, then back to 10, then in release, slide down to 6, 6 on the G, and when you do that, switch over to your bridge pickup for the ending, we have this. here.
here. So um, we're basically going to a D power chord. After this, switch the bridge pickup to a D power chord. So you don't you don't want that note in there right now. Um, so just open D, second fret on the G, uh, third fret on the B. And then what you're gonna do? You're gonna play the third fret with a slide bend on the D string while you're still holding that chord form. And then play the chord again. And then do the same thing, but now the third fret on the A. So that's just that D on the third fret on the D, and then third fret on the A. So that little thing that I just played, play that five times. We have this. It kind of speeds up as you go. Takes it to a G chord. Then do an F. Just play the F with the bar or just thumb on the low E on the first one. To C. To a G. Go to G. F. Resolve it to a D major. Full D major. And he has this. You heard of that lick in a Guns N' Roses song before. So we're here. We have, we're gonna pull off three to two on the high E. Three on the. You know, just, you're holding the D chord. You're gonna pull off three to two on the high E. Play that B string. Let go of the index finger to play the open G. And then play four on the D. Open D. And then the open A. And then strum that D again. And then you'll hear him uh, kind of do the, the toggle switch where he has one of his pickups uh, with the volume off and the other pickup with the volume on. So you can toggle back, eh, less Paul set up, I can't do that here. But that's what's going on. He's kind of going from a pickup that's on, that's off, and that's what he's creating that effect. Just flicking that switch back and forth really rapidly. All right, so I know it's kind of a detailed thing of something that is has a lot of really highly improvised sections to it, but I hope I got my point across well that those individual parts um, you can make it sound very close to what he's doing without having to really get it note for note. Uh, but then all the melodies and stuff, that's obviously very important to get accurate, and, um, um, but that's a lot easier to do. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.